Here we have Tyson oh, here Fury, Francis Ngannou. This is going to cause controversy, this one. Yeah. It is going to cause... So this is the knockdown, right? right? We, here we can, now we can, can watch it. Here we go. Now we can watch Tyson. We... Bonk. Right on the chin. <laughs> Look at man going, what the Look at him. What the Hi guys, we want you to share our content. Simply like, subscribe or follow our channels on all social media outlets. The more people you tag, the more posts you make, the more chance you've got of winning. We're giving away five $50 prizes. Get boxing. Hi guys and welcome back. This is the recorded version, however, because YouTube crashed, which we don't like doing, to Fighters Talk TV's Got Chinned episode with a good pal Max of the Viking page. How are you doing, mate? Not bad, mate. Not bad. No, I know you're getting fed up because we've had to do this twice now. <laughs> but it is, it is what it is. And I want Yay! to tell everybody, <laughs> rinse in. I want to tell everybody now. Do not forget to download the latest Fighters Talk TV app, available both on the iStore and the Google Play Store, and give your say to some of the most controversial boxing events that are happening, including this week's boxing event between Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. Simply search Fighters Talk TV, all one word, on the App Store, and you'll get it like this. Sign up. No adverts. No plaguing, no selling your details, nothing like that. Get your copy of it and have your say. You can watch the latest videos here. You can see the KSI one. You can see the video. Watch the fight and take your vote. And I'm going to vote Tommy Fury. Why not? Look, watch that. Well, there you go. Look, Tommy Fury won that fight. Hey, thank you for casting your vote. Press OK. Then you get to view the results. And, of course, you can see... Look at that. There's some controversy there. KSI, 29% of the people think KSI won that fight. Uh, 57 say Tommy Fury and 14% say a draw. Don't forget, have your say. Watch the videos through legitimate sources and uh, it doesn't cost you a copper coin. Anyway, so we're going to talk about the weekend's knockouts, knockdowns, TKOs and events. And here we go. We're going to start with McGann versus Roberto Duran Jr. Good little fight this. Good little fight this. As we bonk right on the chin. I mean, yeah. that was bang on the button, wasn't it? Miguel, yeah, listen, bang he, come, on the button. he comes steaming in with a right upper, missed completely. Ding. He just got to go. I mean, look, I mean, that was like fell in a tree, wasn't it? Absolutely <laughs> like fell in a tree. We're right at Duran Jr. takes a left hand on the chin, night, night, nurse. Down he goes. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot more can be said for that, is there, Max? No, nah, no, nah, definitely not. It was just a perfect punt, well timed, and listen, he's draw flat right there. <laughs> he was now <laughs> brushing his teeth like that through his yeah. ear roll. Listen, he was he was out cold for you at the deck. Yeah, he was. I mean, he he did thankfully get up, and obviously yeah. we like to see that they get up. Yeah, but... that's that's the that's the best part of it. Obviously, after the knockout, that they actually get up now. Okay. Yeah, definitely. But Roberto Duran's father, you know, he's going to see that, like you said, I think, you know, just because the dad's great don't mean the kid is. Yeah. You know. And, uh, it doesn't always work out like that. It's very, very rare that happens. Absolutely. Absolutely. Although you do get a break. Anyway, moving on to the next fight. We have the Martin McCauley Carlos Takam fight. And this was quite an interesting fight. McCauley comes into it well out of shape. Yeah, listen, nearly three hundred pounds. That's that's big. I mean, he's a big man anyway. That does help carry that. Yeah, uh, it was it was that body shot, wasn't it? The left hand to the body that sort of collected. I'll tell you what, though, for, for a big man, he does. He he's got fast hands. He has. He has. Takam, I think, fought that fight wrong. Not only is it the only refereeing decision I question on the night, it was a bit too early for me because he wasn't yeah. really hurt. Um, no, he was listen, still all he had, about his faculties. He had 30 seconds left of that fight, and I feel the ref should have just let it carry on because he wasn't uneasy on his feet. He wasn't gone in the head. You know, he had a bit of body pain. I think the fight should have gone on to the end of the round, and then if it carried on in the next round, then I jump in and stop it. Yeah, definitely. And I think Martin McCauley was so out of shape. I mean, so out of shape. They say round is a shape, and it is. But I just think, he re and I suffer with being round. Do you know what I mean? But I do think he was so out of shape. And and if it, if it was Takam, Takam looked to come in in shape. He could have danced around for the next two rounds. And it would have been a different outcome. But Coley wouldn't have had enough energy to lift his head. Do you know 
you know what I mean? No, definitely, but, definitely not. But anyway, carrying on, you know, well done to Bacoli. Off he goes, marching forward. And let's look at the next fight. We have Moses Atuma versus Istvan Banath. Now, Moses is Mar as, uh, Max's pal. They touch each other's legs asleep on planes. But that was a nice little right hand there, wasn't it? Bang on the chin there. Listen, it wasn't even a power punch. It was just a, just a little stiff punch to get away sort of thing. Uh, and he launches in crack. Yeah. Mind you, we didn't get him with the left hook as it came in. He was too busy. Well, he was lucky, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so. Bang. And over the top. And that's Listen, that, really. th just remember, guys, this Moses, say this Moses, Moses, he's only 18 and he carries a lot of power like, like a fully developed adult. Look at this. And that uppercut, brutal, up, right uppercut, right hand. And another couple of shots to the body. Referee quite rightly calls it off. And he's a very special talent, this young kid. Very yeah, special. He's, he's, for a young man, he's, he's got quick, dangerous, vicious hands. And he's and he's not afraid to get stuck in. He, don't, he doesn't hold himself back like some fighters we can name. He's in there, you know. He's got nothing to prove. He's just... He's, Devastating puncher. Well, he's, they were saying feel... he doesn't even look quite in engaged with some of these fights, you know. I mean, what's it going to take to get this guy engaged? Well, I said probably a different set of figures. But he's yeah. a nice man as well, Moses, to talk to. So Yeah, you know, but he's, uh, I, I, I believe, in the next 18 to two years, he's he's ready for that belt. He's ready to take, ready to go for it. Oh, I, I, well, let's, I think probably earlier than that, I think, I think he should do... You know, southern area, British, Commonwealth, European. I think you need yeah, to get Yeah, I think, I think he can accomplish young. all that within the next two years. Well, I don't know if it'll be the next two years. Two to three years, I think. I think four or five to a world title shot. And certainly you mentioned Johnny Fisher. I don't think that's going to happen for another couple of years. It could be quite an interesting matchup. It's Matram versus Queensbury. Listen, if Johnny Fisher can get young fight of the year, I think Moses is a new contender. Definitely. So, on we go. Alex Bank Medev, I do apologise about it, and Junior White. Now, this is the Klingon Russian. Right, this guy has a scowl like a Klingon out of Star Trek. I mean, he is just an absolute monster of a man. Look at him. A, a fantastic fight. So heavy handed. But if you, it's, it's his eyes. It's his eyes. And he dealt with him. He did deal with him. Listen, uh, I don't know what he's like that, wasn't he? Yeah, I think he's got, I think he's got a tick. Got, I wouldn't yeah. tell him. No, I wouldn't <laughs> tell him either. <laughs> Look at that. Bang. Crack. Crack. Bonk. Off he yeah, goes. Look, Down he goes. Three punches landed and then it does it again. Bang on the chin look, there. Look at that. Arms. Crack with a left hand and then another left hand straight away and down he goes. And this is the TKO moment. This is a very good stop by the referee. It did save uh, the young chap, Junior Wright, from <laughs> getting hurt because if you look at this, crack, Boss. his arms are down. He's going to fall forward. Referee straight in there. Very, very good decision. Fantastic stoppage. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing the nice uh, big Russian now out of Canada fighting his next round. Very strong, very powerful. Yeah. yeah absolutely didn't disagree with that. Fantastic fight. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what. Seeing in, uh, it's on my first time seeing him fight, I was, I was impressed. For the size of the man, he moved quick, moved well. And um, I think his next opponent, he's got to have a step-up fight. Well, I, I think you always progress anyway, naturally. And I think it'd be interesting to see, you know, what level this guy is and how far he can go. There's still a lot more to learn, um, uh, as, as you, as you yeah, know. Because well, he's got two belts already. What, that was the... Um... I think it was British and Commonwealth or something. No, oh, that was the South American Championship. And now he won, I think it was the WBO or WBA. He won the international uh, yeah. title, rather, didn't he? So, yeah, I think it's time for him to step up, take on someone else, and then start going for like the bigger fights. Well, I did. you know what, though? I mean, there's so many belts, it drives me nuts in this. You don't need I to... know. Must be 10 belts. It's, it's weight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. And that's through that's through each of the uh, governing bodies. Joseph Parker, Simon King. I didn't think that this was going to go very far, and it clearly didn't. No. So, uh, you know, Joseph Parker is being put up against a guy who's got a good record fighting cab drivers. <coughs> um, as you said, you know, and and there was levels to this. And Joseph Parker, former world champion, you know, all right, coming off a couple of losses, but here he dealt with him. What a, what an <laughs> yeah. uppercut that was! What an uppercut! 
Listen, he, he showed who, who was the boss in that ring. That's it. Bang, look at that. I mean, he didn't want to know. I mean, he was going down with that. I mean, he could have felled a tree with that, Joseph Parker. Uh, you know, and the other thing to remember is Joseph Parker's training every day with Tyson Fury. You know, so yeah. he's used to fighting big men. He's happily, you know, dealing with stronger fighters. And he dealt with that man very quickly. He did, he did. And, uh, you know, the right uppercut, straight through, straight through the middle of his guard and not nearly no one took his head off. Yeah, you know absolutely. what I mean. And I think I did you say he's, he uh, got beat by Joyce, didn't he? He did. He got knocked out by Joe Joyce. Yeah. Well, perhaps it's time to run, rerun that back. Well, uh, you could. I mean, he could possibly put that into Ed, uh, Frank Warren because both, I think, are with him. And Joe Joyce is just coming off a loss, a second loss to Zhang. So it could be something very, really, really interesting to to go along there. But also, there's an argument for Parker versus. Daniel Dubois, if Daniel Dubois wants to get back in the mix following the Alexander Usyk loss. Well, not heard nothing from him since since that time. You know well, what I mean? I Even think... in training. You know well, what I mean? Well, I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, that's something that we can talk to Frank about well, when we next see him. Yeah. That's all we can do. Okay, so here we go. These, I think this has got to be fight of the night. Fabio Wardley versus David Adelaide. Yeah, bad blood. Uh, yeah, there was a just a quick round. There was a bit of a, 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 a schmaz at a... Uh, an event and uh, Adelaide gets cut by Wardley and his team and here we go look at this is the best way to assert yeah. revenge right hand left hook bang he goes down Wardley sticks his tongue out I'm not hurt he clearly was yeah, you can see this he again said, Fabio said something to him crack look at that what a left hook what a peach <laughs> and here is where the referee stops it right so he jumps in referee has obviously seen enough so Adelaide is getting it with everything but the ring post. And uh, yeah, there is his hands are just barely cut. He falls back against the ropes. His arms are down. The referee has seen enough. Yeah, uh, push the referee away. And, and he pushed I, the referee. I right? thought he was going to chin him at one point. <laughs> <laughs> We'd be having that on this episode as an episode of Got Chin. Yeah. Uh, the pro- trouble is in, in this, and I've talked about it before, I think some of these fighters don't realise the referee's in there for their safety. Is it, 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 the referee has to have it on his conscience. If he doesn't stop the fight and you get seriously injured, and he's got to live with that. And he has to live with that. So, and I think it's not just that it's professional standard. It's, and, and I think the fact that that Adelaide falls back against his hands are down. And, uh, you know, he, he, he jumped in right for me. Yeah, I think, like you said, I think um, Fabio Wardley was going to start running away with that fight. You know what I mean? He knocked him down once and then on him again. And he was, I think if, if the fight went on, I think... Uh, Wardley will just keep knocking him down as he gets up, knocks him back down again. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So the other thing, of course, is Fraser Clark next. So David Ramirez, or Javid Ramirez, sorry, versus Jose Roja. This was actually quite a nice, interesting TKO, this. That's it. It's that right, right uh, overhand. And, and and you see that he doesn't even argue. Goes, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. And listen, him. and clearly there was a size difference. It's got to be over half a foot in difference. Longer arms, more powerfully built, broader. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, it doesn't mean it's you're going to win. I mean, look at the late like Scott Connor Ben fight. Right, have some of that with him dealt with him and it's you know it's good to see you know not just the heavyweights featuring some good TKOs and stoppages because obviously we had there was a matchroom event in Cancun Mexico which is where we're seeing that last fight from and you've obviously got the big event in Riyadh Saudi Arabia which is the Fury and Garnu fight so yeah and um it was certainly was interesting this this and it's it's good to see that Matrim is still putting on shows. It just it does drive me mad that they put them on the same bloody night. Listen, yeah, if no, one of you's no. got a big show, yield up to the other one and move to the Friday night. Do you know what I mean? I think that you're then going to get more butts in seats and more attention because you can't watch both of them. You know, and I know they're in two different time zones. But I went a bit about half past one last night after all the stuff that went on with the Engano fight, which meant I was so exhausted I couldn't stay out for the other one. Nah, see, I I, I literally crawled into bed. Well, you were in oh, bed. Then. We were still arguing about a show last yeah. night. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I've got to get my two pennants in before I go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I want to make your life miserable, just like mine is. Okay, so on to the next one. Nunes versus Escandon. 
And this, this was something to watch. This was. Ding! Well, I've, some of that. <laughs> I have some of that. <laughs> cuckoo, cuckoo. Uh, he's got birds tweeting around his head. That was a beautiful, beautiful right hand. It was swung from the rooftops. Kapow! Gone. And uh, there's no way he could have argued with that. No, no he, way. Listen, it was rocked and divvy after the punch. So I think the ref was right to jump in. So there's the hand. Watch this. Boom! Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh. I mean, I'll tell you what. They took his two molars out the back of his head and they landed in row number five. It was that It was that brutal, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he couldn't have done any worse if he used an axe. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, it was... Listen, that come from, like, the other side of the ring to hit him and cocked him well. Uh, you know, as he fell down, his arms just dropped by his side. He's like, ah, boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was a great knockout. It was an absolutely great knockout. And uh, you know, uh, tell me guys what you think, but but I think it was a fantastic knockout. And I, you know, I just, once again, it's it's nicer to see some of the lighter guys, not just the heavyweights, knocking each other out. You know, I think when you go down in weight, you get increased speed and sometimes increased en- en- you know intensity. You know, if you look at a uh, uh, a Bam Rodriguez fight yeah, coming look at up, Sonny with, Edwards, Sonny Edwards, you know, he's yeah. got like. 15 wins or something. Don't quote me on that. I'm just saying, just like, just putting it out there. And 12 of them ain't. So now, now we've got to move on. They? We've got to move on. Foster oh. versus Hernandez. Oh, it didn't look too clever there. Yeah, I was just getting beaten up. It was just getting beaten up. Hernandez just getting beaten up. And, and but the problem is, of course, it's for a world title. Uh, you you can't not respond, guys. If you're going to sit there and you're not going to respond, the referee has a duty of care to you as a fighter. And as you can see, bang! What a beautiful uppercut! And he didn't just get him once; he got him twice. Referee had had enough. That's it. Finished. Yeah, listen, you, you can't you can't just stand there with hands like that. Take eating punches. The ref's gonna stop the fight because you're not you're not retaliating, you're not defending yourself. Well, you know, I, I totally agree. And 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 Foster was doing a number, and it was only gonna get worse. Yeah, definitely. And I think sometimes, as I say, these fighters don't you know have to remember that uh, you, you, that the referee is to do a job. And as we saw with the David Adelaide fight, that could have ended very bad because Adelaide actually, I thought he actually punched the referee for stopping yeah, the fight. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I thought that a lot. And no, it was like, to, like, pushed that's him away. That's like me wind the telly, you know. So did he just punch the ref or did he just push him? Yeah. Right. It did look <laughs> remarkably like he just chinned the ref, and that would have been a new, different episode because it could have cost him quite dearly. Yeah, but, that, that career ending. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think sometimes, and a big fine. yeah, uh, it would have cost him his purse. I would have thought. Anyway, on to the next. Here we have Tyson oh, Fury, Francis Agali. This is going to cause controversy, this one. Yeah. It is going to cause... So this is the knockdown, right? right? Now we, Here we now can, now we can, can watch it. Here we go. Now we can watch Tyson slide along the floor. Right, so you can see Tyson Fury comes forward a lot because Agali isn't. And all he did is tap nice. him on the head. No, he punched him and he slid along the floor four foot. No, he did not four foot my ass. His, his legs are about five foot off the ground. Watch. Clock, at, he, he caught him on the shoulder. He just overbalanced. Sell, no, he didn't down. catch him on the shoulder. Yeah, he he did. made the side of the head. He didn't. He, he caught him on the shoulder and hit him on the side of the head. The power was taken out of it by the shoulder. Here's a slow bow from oh, another angle. Bang. Yeah, see, didn't right. Touch his shoulder. He did touch his shoulder. No, he did touch his shoulder. No, and he, look at him. Fine. He ain't even hurt. He's just looking around going, what? Look at yeah. him. What? Sledgehammer hit me. Jesus. No, sledgehammer. <laughs> yeah. Francis Ngannou suffered with anus collapticus. No, no way. way was it a sledgehammer. No. No. no way was it. Sorry. Anyway, guys, that's the end of the episode of Got Chinned. Max was wrong again. I was no, right. Max, Max owes me a lunch. Millions of people. <laughs> and we thank you very much. Don't forget to download the Fighters Talk TV app on your phone. It's absolutely free wherever you are in the world. Sign up, download it, and have your say and vote on who you think actually really won the fight out of Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou, and we will catch you later. Once again, thanks very much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with all your friends, and you could win one of our $50 prizes that we're giving away every month. And we'll see you again soon. Bye.